Well, hi, GITV. Bob the X-Men Hildebrand here, along with... Wait, how do you know it started already? Just introduce yourself. These guys know who I am. <laughs> okay. What are you I, about? Well, we got this? Tim from Crytek. Yeah, go ahead and refresh that. From Chris. From Chris, yes. It's but an you, important distinction. But, but you're here with Crytek products. I am indeed. Indeed, with some cool ones. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now that you guys are watching, thank you for joining us uh, on this auspicious day, April 28th, 2015. Got the year right this time. And uh, yeah, we've got Tim in here today to talk about some cool Crytek stuff. But before we go into that, we're going to go over some regularly scheduled promos really quick. So, first of all, our 25% coupon code is still live. That's 2015-2015 for short. And that's a train in the background, in case you're watching. Uh, we also have our AR-57 Blitz going on tomorrow. So, if you want to get a gun, that you can uh, interchange P90 mags with your friends using P90s. It's a really good option. And our spring cleaning sale is uh, is available on our website. It's on one of the scrolling banners. You can click on that. Take a look at all those products because a lot of them are marked at up to, you can save up to 57% off, which is pretty dope. We also have Global Checkout. We've been shipping to, I believe so far, over 50 countries, except North Korea because they've been bad. Um, so <laughs> so if, you, uh, if you're checking out our website and you, you're ordering from overseas, hit that gl blue Global Checkout button. It'll take care of all the duties, taxes, and fees and let you know up front what's, uh, what is okay to, to ship to your country and what you're going to have to pay just to get it in country. Um, we also have faster East Coast shipping from GITactical.com if you're on the Eastern Seaboard and you want to get your goods for your weekend war, you can get them in one to three days, one to three business days if you ship out of GI Tactical. So take a look at GITactical.com. GITactical.com and it has stop it, Tim. You, you know why I can't say these things correctly. I have to have my tongue sewn back together. Um, also, our Boneyard Jusky got restocked on our website, so check it out. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff on there, especially if you want internal parts for your guns. And we have a BB Wars Triple Threat weekend coming up on June 28th. Three games, three states, one weekend. We've got a two-day game called BB Wars Episode 2, Shadows of Fate at GamePod Combat Zone. We've got a BB Wars uh, Battlefront, Scorched Earth, which is going to have a D14 in Texas. And we've got BB Wars Battlefront Sledgehammer, which is going to have at Splat Brothers in Virginia. Hopefully. Sledgehammer. Sled wow, that's a reference. Well played. Now, uh, I've got a lot of topics for Tim, which includes one thing that we cannot talk about. Good. Excellent work. Um, so, first of all, I would like to go over some cool Crytek stuff you have in here. Um, Are you sure? You don't want to talk about cars, Bob? You don't want, you want we, to talk about we, BMWs we, at all? We, Bill! But, oh, he's not here yet. We, uh, we mentioned we wouldn't discuss that. Okay. Because then you would talk for about half an hour. Um, and thank you. if you don't say anything. Well, if Mark comes back in here and you guys just BMW, 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 it's going to get crazy. Mm. Um, uh, go, uh, PA, production assistant. He's got them over here, actually. Oh, really? I think they're right there. What would you like to see first? Uh, I'd like to take a look at the BBs because, uh, you know, over there. I'm really excited that more and more companies are releasing BBs and specifically Crytek BBs, um, especially because of the cool bottle and logo. But, so we've got 0.25 gram BBs. We've also got, I believe, uh, 0.2s as well as... this asking about my balls, bro. Oh, stop it. Stop it, Tim. <laughs> um, so we got 0.2 gram BBs from Crytek. You can see, obviously... No talking about BMWs. Thank uh, you, Bill. Where were you? Ten I'm minutes late on that. There is a delay. Ten minutes late on that. Okay. So Crytek has recently released their uh, their BBs, which we saw at Shot Show. Obviously, we've got 0 0.2, 0 0.25, and 0 0.28. Uh, do you want to tell us anything about uh, about your BBs? Uh, well, obviously they're BBs. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Back up. Hold yeah. on. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, BBs. Everybody knows about BBs. It's like the most it's the only consumable that we have for airsoft, really. Um, and your BBs are what really makes your performance. Okay, so you can have a really awesome gun. But if your BBs aren't polished properly or if they're imbalanced, the yeah. accuracy is going to be all over the place. So that's obviously a focus for us is the performance of the gun. So, you know, you got your Crytek AEG. You want to match it with Crytek BBs to make sure that you get the most out of it. Also, the bottle. The bottle is really cool. <laughs> it, it is really cool. Actually, you know, this could probably fit, I mean, maybe into a double stack 308 magazine pouch? I mean, maybe. I don't know why you would carry this many BBs on the field because it would rattle around all over the place, but check this out. What? Do you practice that at home? No, but we did design it so that it's easy to display. That's mostly for the retailers, but... Um, oh, that's, oh, you got the little indentations there, so yeah. it actually fits in. Oh, that's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, Although, that doesn't that. really prove yeah, anything. Try that. Try that, bro. Oh, yeah. I'll be danged. Well so played, it's really sir. just so that it can stack like this without falling over. But, I mean, <clears throat> the BBs... A lot of times, uh, premium BBs end up costing a lot of money, but we really tried hard to make sure that we could give you guys a performance product that didn't cost, you know, an arm and a leg. And so that's why they're priced the way they are. That's why they're available in 4,000 round count, which is enough to get you around a couple of days of airsoft, depending on how you shoot. But, uh, yeah, we've got two 025s and two 8s. 
Um, my favorite are the two eights actually. Really? Why's yeah. that? Because they're a little heavier than two fives, so you get. <laughs> well, they well, are. That's that's a very they're good explanation. They're exactly point yeah. zero three grams heavier. Whoa, you're blowing my mind here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're a little heavier. You got that penetrating power to get through, uh, you know, some shrubbery, some bushes, but uh, not too heavy to weigh you down. What's so funny about? Just a lot of jokes in that last sentence. Um, okay, so you guys are releasing, you have released the BBs, that, which is really cool. Uh, I know there are a couple products you have right over there that a lot of folks in our office are really excited about. So, without further ado, do uh, production assistant, can you pick one of those two guns? Not the one on the is left. Is this frozen? Or I'm actually watching. Uh, I believe um, that's your face that froze the program. What do we have here? <laughs> All right, so we've got our Trident 47 in the house. It is still a prototype. The release date for this is uh, sometime later on this year. As you can see, it looks a little different from the original one that we um, announced when we first announced Crytek last year at SHOT Show. But we wanted to update it with our rail and a couple of other goodies as well that we'll release later on in the future. Now this is an SBR length rail, correct? Uh, yeah, so it's a 13 inch defiance rail. We have a 16 inch barrel on here, so it's slightly longer than our SPR. Hmm. So if you're looking for something a little different, this is definitely a thing you want. I have to say, the SPR was really fun to use at Op Copperhead. I mean, uh, did you like that? I really did because, uh, I mean, I definitely like the longer longer barrel length. It's better, especially for that course, because there, mm -hmm. there were a lot of long distance engagements, but with the minimum engagement distance inside the buildings, I was still doing fine, just be able to shoot people as close as I as close as, close as I need to. Mm -hmm. Here's how I got this guy. Oh, this guy. That um, guy. Yeah, that Don't worry guy. about that little guy. <laughs> okay. Um, how so, was Copperhead? Copperhead was a lot of fun. The AO was great. Uh, American Milsom staff were great. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, you know, it was really, I think what's really cool is going to those games uh, that have, you know, vehicles and smoke grenades, all that stuff that kind of adds to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize there were going to be as many vehicles as there were. And one gentleman even brought out, I think he rented a U-Haul. No way. Like a giant van. So, like, it would roll up. on the field? Yeah. And you return the truck? I, that, well, that's <laughs> the thing I was curious about because I feel like there would be, like, a lot of fees involved with all the different BB dents, but uh -huh. they would literally like roll right in the middle of battle and the back like uh, door would just go up and 20 or 30 UFS guys would pile out. It was like, uh, oh my God. Gotcha, gotcha. So, People carrier. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so that was pretty pretty devastating to, to tell you the truth. But uh, yeah, no, there's a lot of cool stuff there. Uh, also, my first experience with, you ever seen those uh, tag-in R2B grenades? No. Okay, well, um, they're made out of Russia by a company called Tag Innovations. They're the same people who make that uh, uh, 40 mic mic, the 40 millimeter uh, uh, grenades that detonate. You're not aware of those either. No. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, essentially, um, it's a grenade. Ordnance has never really been my thing, Bob. I don't know if you know this, but I rarely even pull out my sidearm when I play. So That is very true, or you rarely even carry one. But, exactly. Uh, um, but these were really interesting in that, you know, they, they legitimately explode. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the grenades throw up BBs. Uh, the R2Bs specifically throw up BBs. Mm -hmm. um, and they're really loud. Mm -hmm. And this is also the first stop I used actual electronic ear protection, which mm -hmm. was really cool. I mean, I, you know, when they would go off, I, it was like, okay, I, it didn't seem that loud. And everyone around me is like, I can't hear. So we were, just, you, were you using those Howard lights. Yeah. Okay. So just a world of difference. I mean, you've All been right. talking about them for a while. So yeah, I have a set of Peltors, but yeah. same, same basic function. Yeah. Same, same concept. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, really loud. Um, and it was kind of crazy to see those grenades go off because it's like, boom, that was $15. Boom. Another $15. Like I kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, wars are expensive, Bob. I mean, I was I was about it in purchasing because I didn't have a lot of spare money to spend. That's why I won the Timpire because I had all the money. Oh my God, <laughs> you, you did not win. You did not win. I won the last game, which is all that really matters. No, that's not true. That's yes, not, this, is. no, no, it's not true. And this I won all the pushes. You did not win any pushes. It was yeah. it's still it's still the equal. I've won I've won three games tied. and you won three games. This is not like what did you call like. The World Series or poker is like that. That doesn't that doesn't fly in airsoft games. It does totally. No, fly. you're just making up rules after the fact. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do what you're doing. Fine. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll agree to disagree. <laughs> Scene. You have okay. the right to be wrong. Though. <laughs> well, you have the right to be Tim. Tim. I am. Um, mission accomplished. All right, so we got one other gun that uh, I know. Well, first I want to say that uh, the 47 version of the Crytac uh, Mark has been. Epically excited about that thing forever. In fact, he actually called it ahead of time. He's like, nobody else now, just get this. I want to be the only guy. And I was like, well, Mark, that's tough because I'm going to be using that I mean, too. we're going to make more than one. So the opportunity well, will be there. He'll be very disappointed. So, <laughs> if you can't um, have the only one. But I'd like, you to, I'd like uh, our production assistant to, uh, to bring out uh, the gun that Daniel, uh, the head of the marketing department, is most excited mm -hmm. for. This is the Triton LMG. 
Enhanced, correct? Enhanced. So yeah, uh, the first LMG that came out was called the Limited, um, and that was because, sorry, it's my life. <laughs> Uh, that is because we knew we were going to make this thing ahead of time. So we redesigned the front end. We really made sure that the upper rail on the handguard was on the same plane as the upper rail on the receiver just to make sure that you didn't have that three-tiered effect going on. Um, but this is actually just a prototype that we that we have here. It's the same exact one you guys saw at SHOT Show. So we should be seeing this thing within the next couple of months. Now, do you have a price point on this? Yes. What is it? can't tell you yet. Dang it. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, I remember, I remember talking to a lot of the folks um, at Chris at Shot Show, mm -hmm. and everyone I came up to and asked was like, "Who designed the front end of this gun, basically the, the rail section?" Because mm -hmm. they need a raise. And every single person I talked to, including yourself, uh, each one of them were like, "You know what? We actually designed it as a team." So yeah. we can't really say it's one person or the other. I was like, oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so it's really cool. I mean, I think you guys did a great job with this one. That's how we do things about Very well played, sir. And uh, I don't know why, but for some reason this reminds me of Starship Troopers. I think it just looks a little, like, what futuristic. What it should do is remind you of our Sphinx pistols, actually, because the lines on this were inspired by the Sphinx SDP. Really? Yeah. If I had my pistol... No, I don't have my pistol with me. But if I had my pistol, I'd show you. But, yeah, so these angles and these cuts right here... Uh, should remind you a little bit of the Sphinx SDP. This is kind of where your front cocking serrations would be on the pistol. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine just a really large pistol frame, I mean pistol slide. That's it. In rail form. This is this is the inspiration for well, this. Well, that's interesting because now that you mentioned I do see it. Yeah. What is seen cannot be unseen. Quite. Though. Well played. Well, this is going to be really exciting. I'm looking forward to this coming out. I know Dan I think Daniel's original plan was like, okay, mm. do I just buy like the front end kit and put it on this or do I just buy both? Or do I just, he basically just came back around like, I just kind of want both. It was probably a good decision. We'll take care of yeah. Daniel. Yeah. Dan Daniel's good people. So. Indeed, he is. And he really loves LMGs, and he rocks and rolls them. So this would be dope, especially if he gets to take it to, uh, I believe, Broken Home. That'll be awesome. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Well played, Tim. All right. Well, we hand this to our production assistant. Thank you, PA. Thank you, PA. Thank you, Striking. <laughs> okay. All right. So we do have a couple other topics to talk about. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Tim was no part of the... Kidding. No kidding. Uh, Tim was part of the Tim vs. Bob series, which continued on to StarCraft, which you won uh, through, I would say, um, what's that called? Deception, uh, some mild cheating, uh, and a little bit of help from our production assistant, who's currently... It was, it was not cheating, Bob. It was a surrender. I gave up everything. No, no, no. Our production assistant said, well, you might as well do this. And you're like, oh, yeah. And then that won you the you game. You basically said you might as well commit suicide because Bob already killed you. Yeah. And then I committed suicide. And, and it ended up killing me. Yeah. So without his, you know, addition to the battle, which he was supposed to stay out of, mm -hmm. I would have had the W. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll never know now, Bob. That's the bottom line. What do you mean we'll never know now? History is written by the victors. That's all I'm saying. You're a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we'll be able to play again on a laptop that you still have not booted up. No, I haven't done it yet. Is that, uh, is that our production assistant's laptop? No, it's mine now. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get a, a TVB versus or TVB StarCraft version going sometime soon. But you don't really play video games per se, correct? That's correct. Moving on. Okay. Um, actually, out of curiosity, because you did used to play video games. Um, I think the last StarCraft I played religiously was Brood War, mm. which is what led to our StarCraft endeavor because I said, oh, I haven't played since Brood War. I bet you I could beat you. Yeah, yeah, you were just... And I did. You... I hate it. I hate you. <laughs> um, yeah, you did say you're like, uh, you know, I will bet I'm so good that, and you've been practicing so much, Bob, that even though I haven't played the new one, I'll still beat you. And I did. And challenge. No, god damn it. We're gonna replay that. We have to replay that. I can't deal with this heresy. Um, okay. Can't deal with my hair. Is he? Um, <laughs> it, it is a pretty good look. I'll give you that. I'll That's give you fun. that. Um, now you get to shoot uh, a lot of what are those called uh, firearms? Bullets, yeah. Yeah, bullets, as I hear they're uh, mm -hmm. said. Now um, you have a Sphinx, uh, or you have a couple of Sphinxes, don't you? I have five. Damn. Okay. Um, now you have the compact and the full size, correct? I have. You don't uh, have five compacts, do you? No, Good. I have two compacts, one subcompact, and then two three thousands. My God, why do you need so many pistols? Why not, Bob? This is America. That's what, what I'm kind of talking about. That's that? what I'm talking about. That's the answer I want to hear. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about the Sphinx in particular? Because I was really interested uh, when I heard about it because uh -huh. it's it, essentially a handmade firearm like you know a lot of others or at least part of the process is done by hand, correct? 
So the history of our Sphinx pistols goes back a long way, but really the, the gun that put Sphinx on the map was the Sphinx 3000. That is what you're referring to as a pretty much a custom-made pistol. all made by hand. Um, and the gun that we have on the market now is the SDP, which is the, the you know basically the new version of it. Um, and what we did for the SDP is we streamlined the production process so that we could bring the cost down. Because the 3000 was called the 3000 because it starts at $3,000. Oh uh, but the STB is considerably more affordable. But, you know, by bringing the cost down, we didn't sacrifice on the quality on the gun. So That's good. What you get is kind of a semi-custom, semi-production gun uh, for a really good value. Now, with that being said, the gun is still around $1,000. So it's not the most affordable pistol on the market. But once you shoot it and you see the performance out of the gun and the ergonomics, it all starts to make sense. I was I was actually surprised the first time I got to shoot a Sphinx pistol and how easy it was to just go right back on target and mm -hmm. it hits pretty much right where you're pointing. Yeah. It's shocking, actually. Yeah. Very early on when I started at Chris, I went on a range day where we took our gun and shot it back to back to back against the Glocks, the HKs, the SIGs, you know, all the other other pistols that are, you know, readily available on the market. And when you shoot them back to back to back it really becomes apparent as to how much more accurate the Sphinx is and the build quality of it. And the ergonomics are kind of subjective, kind of depends on mm -hmm. you know what you like. But for me and the way I shoot and the way I hold my gun, the ergonomics are well it works out really on. well. Um, and I definitely know you're doing you're starting to do a lot more uh, um, firearms or competitive shooting with firearms, correct? Kind of, kind of. I've been doing a little more uh, USPSA stuff mm -hmm. um, this Sunday. I'm probably going to do another another steel challenge thing at a at uh, Rahagi's. Oh, it'll be fun. And, uh, Did you see this comment? Make a weird face. Oh, I was actually looking at that one. Oh. Which is why I giggled. Oh, shoot. I thought he was talking to you. Or to me. I found he's talking to you. Oh, well, I make weird faces often enough, so... Um, that will be a good one for uh, memes. Uh, anywho, um, you are actually going to start doing uh, a three-gun airsoft competition, aren't you? Well, Tech City's having their three-gun match this Saturday that I'm attending uh, as a sponsor because we're the official... BB sponsor for the event, um, and if I can secure a shotgun and a pistol, I will definitely uh, try to compete. I don't expect to win, but I think it'd be good just to get out there and compete and, and see what's up. Now, speaking of securing a shotgun and pistol, I believe yesterday you were getting on a bit of a high horse about you uh, only want to use a semi-automatic shotgun. Well, it makes the most sense, Bob, because if you uh, see what real three-gun shooters use, they mostly use semi-automatic shotguns. Yes, yes, but but the <laughs> likelihood of finding one of those that's functional in time for that game, yeah, it's going to be very yeah, slim. That's the issue. Um, I think Maruzen, Marushin made one. A long I think it's time Maruzen ago. actually. Maruzen. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, they're pretty tough to get in the United States, and they're pretty expensive. So yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to find them. Yeah, and they are shell ejecting, which can be a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm. I've always been a fan of pumps. I think you know that about me. So I've got a fair amount of pump shotguns, but uh, I think uh, the TM870 will set you right, so to speak. Hopefully, yes, hopefully. Um, that being said, um, now what else? Uh, what else is going on with Chris in terms of firearms? Because I, I was actually really excited when you first mentioned me quite a long time ago mm -hmm. uh, about that you guys are coming out of your 22 line. Yes. Okay. So the 22s should be released by the end of this year. Um, we had a prototype on display at EWA. We tried to get one to show you guys at SHOT Show. It just didn't work out, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But at EWA, that thing was definitely turning some heads. Um, the idea behind the Crytek 22 is to be supplemental to your AR training. Um, a lot of, one of the, I don't want to say issues, but a lot of the 22 ARs that are on the market right now, they're missing some of the features that you would get on your regular AR. Mm -hmm. And so we're implementing those into our Crytek 22s in addition to a couple of other things. Um, and the price point is going to be right there. We're, we're hoping to get the gun under around six hundred dollars. That'd be nice. Yeah, so it'll be very affordable. Twenty-two ammo is cheap when you can find it, and uh, it'll be a great way to train and manipulate the rifle just as you would your AR without having to spend you know fifty, forty cents a shot, whatever, whatever two, two, three is now these days. Indeed, indeed. Well, that'll be really cool. I, I can't remember if you said, but is there a release date on those? By the end of this year. Okay. Well, yeah. that'll, that'll be awesome. There's a time frame, Bob. A time frame, you mm -hmm. say? Well, wait. Yeah, it's quite. Cool. Uh, now, recently, you've been uh, playing, uh, uh, what's that? Uh, Basketball? Golf? <laughs> yeah, that's Is it. that how you say it? Is that... Well, I played with you a couple weekends ago. Yeah, that, that's... Okay. I wasn't sure what game that was, so, yeah. Which can explain my crappy performance. Indeed. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't I don't play a lot of golf ever. So, well, you, the you, first time we went out, that was, that was uh, the first time in a long time. Well, you did very well. Your shots were pretty... Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, straight. Mm -hmm. So that does uh, does help your, your mm -hmm. score. Mm -hmm. So, 
a lot of questions about the Vector AEG. Ah, yes. And and that's an interesting thing because I saw I saw you guys post about that and I was curious I didn't hear many more details on when it's going to be released like what the price point will be like I, all I saw was that you guys were planning on coming out with it so is there anything you can tell our viewers about it There's no details There are no details No The details are we're making a Vector AEG Well that'll be awesome So that'll we be. announced that at EWA um, at the Airsoft Meetup which is a really cool thing the airsoft meetup. See, that's the face I had when they first told me <laughs> about the airsoft meetup at Ewok. So I was like, "What are you talking about?" Uh, airsoft meetup. But there's a big gathering of airsoft. I want. I guess it's media, industry folks, yeah, or, yeah. airsoft industry people, um, and they give presentations and stuff like that. But the airsoft meetup at Ewok is pretty cool. So that's when we told people about the uh, the Vector AEG. Had a little teaser photo in there with uh, a vector and uh, a gear set. And a motor, but uh, yeah, I mean that is a project that we're working on. No other details as of yet, but rest assured, as things start to develop, I'll let you guys in on that. Any considerations putting in moderate blowback? No, Bob. The vector is about re I know, eliminating and recoil. And you want to add recoil but, to the to the airport? But there's there's a tiny amount of recoil in the vector. I mean, there is recoil. The vector system does not eliminate recoil. Yeah, of it course. It mitigates it. But. However, the 9mm vector, uh, I mean, uh, the videos I saw, like, I think it was like Richard Ryan of Full Mag, mm -hmm. he was firing it, yeah. and the gun damn near didn't move, and he was like, Grr! Yeah. What the heck? Like, yeah. it was crazy. So yeah. it was really interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the 9mm vector is a lot of fun. Shooting the 9mm back to back with the 45 is also is also a trip because the 45 definitely kicks a lot more and the 9mm is like a laser beam. That's crazy, yeah. Now I definitely would like to get some time on that if possible because that'd be really fun. I mean, the 45 vector is just fun as all beans by itself. So, mm -hmm. oh, all right. Well, Tim, we've got two more topics on here, so why don't we cover one real quick? What's what's your sign? My sign? Yeah. I was born in May. Taurus. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'm an Aries, so we're incompatible, so that doesn't work. Um, but we knew this already. Yeah, we did know this. We don't need to look at the stars. No, not the stars. Um, other things to talk about is, what is your favorite movie? Ooh. I know it's a tough one. You can't have one favorite. All right, well, pick a, pick a, a top, like, three, or your top three, like, favorites in the moment. Hmm. I don't, I don't know, Bob. Top Gun is definitely up there. We were just talking about that. We were. <laughs> it's it's readily available in my mind. Very well played. Uh, Black Hawk Down's got to be one of those good classic ones too. Classic snatch. Just a lot of stuff that Guy Ritchie does is is very good. Well played. Well Actually, played. Top Gun and Black Hawk Down. Those are both Scott movies. Ridley Scott did those. I yeah, think. no, you were way off. I wasn't going to correct you on that, but yeah. What? That they weren't Guy Ritchie movies. Ridley Scott did them. Though. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who else does good movies? Quentin Tarantino, of course. Mm -hmm. Did you see Django Unchained? Love that movie. That was bomb. That scene where they're talking about, uh, are you positive? I don't know. I don't know what positive means. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, God. They're about to shoot the guy off the horse. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. okay. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Horse. Oh. Yeah. yeah, Christoph Waltz is one of my favorite actors. He's in He's a lot good. of Quentin Tarantino stuff. And He's good. He also knows like four languages, so yeah. pretty impressive. He's very good. Well, actually... It seems impressive, but a lot of people from that region, uh -huh, they know a lot of different languages. Say it again. Uh -huh. Oh my god. <laughs> Europe. It sounds like someone. It's French accent. I don't know. I was just making that up. Okay, but well, yeah, well. I mean Germany, French. Actually, this is an interesting thing because the Chris Group is, is headquartered in Switzerland. And <laughs> I think I know what you're gonna say. In Switzerland, they have three languages or three primary languages that they speak: French, French German, German, and Italian. Italian. Yeah. And a lot of the uh, French-speaking Swiss, they know German, and a lot of German-speaking Swiss know French. But very few of them know Italian. <laughs> <laughs> but but isn't it true? Like you said, like the Italians, like don't bother learning any other languages. Well, I mean, I'm making an overgeneralization. But yeah. When I went to Iwa for the first time, that is what I discovered. Just people, um, a lot of the people that I was talking with, they knew French, English, and German. Um, but then when I meet some Italian people, they don't know any other languages other than Italian. But I can't feel bad for them because I don't know any other language other than English. You so. speak French, like. Passively, a little bit. I can, I can get by when I'm in Switzerland. Um, because, yeah, a little bit, exactly. Mm -hmm. But uh, holding a conversation with somebody, they just speak so fast. I'm like, uh, uh, yeah. But, I mean, I, I have heard um, quite a bit over the years that that is pretty common in Europe to learn uh, oh, yeah. not just one, but, you know, two or three different languages. Oh, because, yeah. I mean, those nation Actually, states are really close together. And, you look know, at America, so big. Yeah, exactly. You don't need to learn anything other yeah. than English. But it is kind of fun to learn other languages. Like I, I desperately wish I knew Spanish. The only, like I grew up in a farming family in Central California, which you'd think Spanish would be good to know. Mm -hmm. And I had babysitters that literally only spoke Spanish. Mm -hmm. 
which was really difficult not knowing Spanish. Mm -hmm. But my middle school only taught French in California. It was Canadian middle school. Isn't that weird? You went to a Canadian middle school? It was based off a Canadian model, and it literally came from a, um, Vancouver all the way down California and ended up in Bakersfield. Wow. It was weird. All right, well, moving mm -hmm. on. Tim, are there some things you would like to talk about? Like, I mean, tell our viewers, like, are any anything cool, anything cool going on in the life of uh, Timothy Sargent? In the life of right now, perhaps. I mean, you guys know most of the stuff I do. I mean, everything that I do, you normally see come out at work. So, you know, pretty busy doing gun stuff, shooting a lot of stuff. Yeah, but I mean, for those of our viewers who you know you might not be an exactly open book to, I mean, isn't there something crazy going on? Are you alluding to something? No, not really. I was just hoping you'd drop a bombshell on them. Um, no, I gotta stay pretty tight-lipped about about all that stuff. Okay. But we do have some crazy stuff that should be coming out in the near future that we didn't release at at Shot Show or at E1. We might have told like a couple of little 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 birds about it, but uh, for the majority of you, I think that you'll be pleasantly surprised at some of the uh, updates and and new things that are coming. Okay, well, uh, that being said, I know there was one thing that we saw at Shot Show that we really talked about. I thought I saw like one of your guns was set up like LVOA style with a wire cutter. Yeah, I don't know where that wire cutter name came from, but the LVOA stands for it's, well, I think that's the purpose of it. Like the, there's there's like a little notch in the front of it where you can actually like stick that on a wire and blast it and cut. Well, maybe it. so, but you don't need a rail to shoot a wire. No, not really. You just shoot it like but a lock spin. I suppose, I guess. But if you're really point blank, you just... What I never got about those is that everyone who I who I know that plays it has them. Like, the setup is really far forward. Like, you literally have to just reach all the way up there to do it. And for me, that's kind of uncomfortable. Like, you know, it's good to have a long gun for long engagements, but if you have a long gun that's, like, always really difficult to, like, wrap your, wrap your person around, it's... I mean, it's a rail, so you can adjust it. No, how I know you, how it, you want. It's just odd that every time I see like someone with that gun, they always have like it's so far forward on such a long gun. So well, it's that shooting style that people the C, are C grip or C clamp. Yeah, the C clamp grip. Um, so I don't know. It's just personal preference for people, I guess. Indeed, it is. Um, okay, well, uh, let's answer Jose's question. Tim, have you taken? Oh, damn it! <laughs> We said we were going to talk about BMWs. Jose wants to talk about BMWs. All right. Have you seen your car to the track lately? No, I haven't. All right. Tim has not. Now, you are a certified car driver. Certified car driver. Yeah. To teach people about your car. Sure. I just don't want to say. You don't want to say that I instruct with the BMW CCA? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> um, we actually still have some footage of uh, your old experiences with that on GITV and Cut, like where you kind of spin out a little bit and then correct and keep going. Oh, yeah. I that was an oldie? There. Yeah. yeah. See, the one of the original ideas behind Uncut was to show the stuff that happens off camera and away like from... Like behind the scenes. Yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that was one of the videos I tried to throw up there just to be like, yo, check this out. We do more stuff other than Airsoft. Um, but that didn't really go anywhere, so that's okay. Yeah, we still put uh, we still put a lot of cool videos on there, including we're doing uh, one minute reviews. We got our guys from the East Coast and the Texas store putting videos up, and uh, sometimes Ed really surprised me with some of the funny stuff he does. Ed's cool. Oh, dude, I saw Ed at the NRA show. I can believe that that weekend that you guys brought Copperhead. Uh -huh. I was really surprised to see him. It was good to see that guy. Ed, if you're watching, what's up, dude? Well, we're actually talking about him uh, recently. We have uh, a video of uh, us playing at Battle Hack, mm -hmm. and Ed was there. Ballahack? I'm sure they'll love it when you say it like that. But I remember the last time I think uh, Christopher Ratton I heard you say it. He's like, you say it like it's like balls, like ball hack. It's That's how it's spelled, B-A-L-L. -L. But it's ball hack. Ball hack. Okay. Not, can't teach an old dog new tricks. Um, well, uh, where was I leading into? Oh, yes. Now, we, we have a video we haven't released, but it's I brought attention to this because Ed, you know, is pr pretty damn good at commanding at airsoft events. But mm -hmm. he also kind of walks around with swagger and just consequently looks like a badass lot like he's literally walking up the field and you haven't seen this video yet but um he's just walking up just looking straight ahead straight ahead and he's like i need a rear guard on me now four people and then someone <laughs> quietly says like contact left and, and ed, ed immediately goes contact left and like he enunciates <laughs> everything perfectly it just sounds so 
distinguished. Yeah. So everything sounds better when you have a British accent. Yeah. Well, what's funny though is like when I talked to Red Wolf Tim at Shot Show, mm -hmm. he's like, you know, I don't know. Like, I think my my accent sounds you know nice, but I also get the feeling it comes out pompous. Pompous. Because like, and that's that's the other part is like pompous sounded like a gift wrap present he gave to us. He's like, am I pompous? And I was like, it does sound a bit when you say it like that. I think it sounds awesome, but I'm used to watching Top Gear, so, I mean, and that's probably the greatest show on TV, or used to be was, on TV. Yeah, yeah I mean, all, all three of the showrunners are gone now, yeah, so that's too yeah. bad. But, uh, who knows, they might do something in the near future, but, yeah, you just sound so much more credible with, yeah. with an English accent, so when you're describing something it's that would generally be boring, it's almost, it's almost as good as Morgan Freeman. When he when shows Morgan up to explain Freeman things, <laughs> he gets a new freckle every time he shows yeah. up to explain something. Uh, oh, this is a good question. Dylan Holmes. Hi, Tim. I was thinking of buying a Crytek SPR. Is it any good? Well, Bob, you have personal experience with that gun, do you not? Yeah, I actually, and this goes to uh, a lot of things uh, in Airsoft for me, is I really like having products that are really great out of the box. So that's why I was excited on the Crytek. I, you know, I... I pulled it out, uh, got it, got it set up for how I want to play with it, and I, I didn't put a whole lot on there. I put, you know, a uh, Contour Rage camera, uh, basically a, a Contour camera with a Rage lens. I have my pressure pad with my flashlight set up, and it just performed. Like I, I once I dialed on the hop up, got my BBs in there, like everything was great right out of the box. You know, not a whole lot of left or right deviation. Had great amount of range, which was perfect for Copperhead because we're engaging people at extended ranges. So if I was using the CRB. I would add a little bit less range, but still that performance. Mm -hmm. So I was really happy with the SPR. And I, I along with Bill, really like M16 length uh, airsoft guns. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I would highly suggest yeah, it. There was a 14 half inch barrel. Well, I know, but it's it's longer than the CRB. I just like the, the longer guns, especially for the outdoor yeah, stuff. Because, yeah. uh, uh, I don't know, I've always felt like, you know, even though the gun is somewhat long, like I'm competent enough that I can still use it in CQB if I wanted to. So that's why with the minimum engagement distance at uh, American Milsom rules, the FPS I was shooting, it still worked out great. So I was really happy. Cool. Yeah. And the trigger response is really great, too. I like that. The trigger response is good on that gun. Yeah. I did I did have a small issue, though, when I was using an 11.1 LiPo. Um, it was, I didn't test fit it beforehand because mm -hmm. uh, I had a bunch of other batteries, but I just happened to put that in my, uh, my mm -hmm. uh, utility pouch. And I put it in there, and I put it in incorrectly, so when I closed it, Basically, the battery was where I would press in to open up the back, mm. and I was like, "Oh my god, oh, god. Aaron, Aaron, I need your assistance." I need an adult. Yeah, I, need, I did say that, uh, but yeah, no, that was just my incorrect battery placement. But other than that, it worked awesomely. Um, and yeah, I would highly suggest checking them out. And if you go to any of your walk-in stores, uh, you can test out those guns before you buy them. So check out both uh, the CRB and the SPR, and uh, hopefully, very soon, uh, what was it the? Uh, it wasn't, uh, what was the 47 variant called exactly? Trident 47. Oh, it was just Trident 47? Yeah. Okay, well, that'd be cool. Um, I have a lot of AK Max too. Keeping it easy. Either. So, um, what uh, what else is going on? What else can we talk Oh, yeah, I remember. I was going to ask you, since you don't play video games, did you happen to see the Star Wars Battlefront trailer? Do I look like I've seen the Star Wars Battlefront trailer? Well, you really ought to go take a look at it. It's really awesome. No, I know there's some new movies coming out that... Star Wars, Star Wars is one of them. The Batman vs. Superman movie is supposed to be good, too. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. I just don't know about Ben Affleck. Uh, you know, people say that, but, you know, well, don't he's, judge a book by its he's, cover. Well, he's just going to have to sell me on it. After the movie, Geely. Oof. I think people Oof. were really skeptical about Heath Ledger playing the Joker, and he did a phenomenal job. Who was who was skeptical? Dude, he was like, like, a, like a teeny, like, you know, sex... Sexy dude that little girls liked, and then he was gonna go play this villain, like super villain. Like people were really skeptical at that time. I don't know. I don't remember hearing a lot of people are skeptical about it, but it several years ago. So yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, but this wouldn't be the first time I'm saying that people have been skeptical about an actor fitting into a role, and then I mean I'm not saying he's gonna do a good job, but maybe he will. And so you got to give him that. Didn't he do what? Didn't he play Daredevil and that like horribly tank too? Yeah, but you know more better than most people. It, it takes more than just the actor to make or break a movie. Of so. course, like you, I mean, any one thing can like really screw up a movie. Like if you have bad sound for the entire time, that's going to kill the audience interaction. Bad yeah. lighting, bad editing, mm -hmm. you know, bad uh, cinematography. But uh, uh, I will say he was darn good at Argo. I really. I was going to bring movie. up that yeah. movie. I was like, come on, he's he, he's done well. Of course, of course. And I can't think of any other movie off the top of my head that he's done that's really good. But I'm sure they're out there. Of course, of course. <laughs> oh my, sorry, I'm reading the comments are going by, and someone really give me. Uh, off kilter. Yeah, I know that's the one I saw. Um, 
By the way, uh, this is not at all related to you or anything you like or do, but uh, I want to tell you this story because um, a good friend of ours, you know Harrison? I am familiar. Yeah. He apparently uh, gave someone a message to share with me on the BB Wars Battlefield this weekend, mm -hmm. and some kid came up to me. He was like, hey, Bob, I have a message from Harrison. I was like, what? He's like, the Imperium, the Imperium of Man is doomed. And he's like, I don't know what that means. i got to go back. It just ran off. What does that mean? Uh, it's basically like a Warhammer 40K reference. Basically, Harrison plays orcs. I play like uh, like the Imperium of Man. Uh -huh. And he just came up. I was like, wow, I'm dealing with all this stuff. And took me back. And I was like, oh, a message from the outside world. <laughs> oh, my God. There are other things going on. Did you win that game? Uh, I was actually just there to coordinate the event. So uh, uh, team or Mongo from Team Therapist and the rest of Team Therapist were commanding. Uh -huh. uh, the Rebels did not prevail, which is why I showed you uh, General Kim's celebration video. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, the Imperials did prevail, but that uh, leads me to my next question. Where How are the Imperial Guardsmen doing anyway? Uh, they're doing very well. Uh, what, what I have found interesting, especially at our event in uh, Texas, mm -hmm. I like that you call them Imperial, um, is that I'm actually getting a lot more Milsim teams on my side. No. I know. Isn't that crazy, though? It's kind of weird. Not really, but... Well, it used to be I mean, like they're there to play Earth off. Well, I know, <laughs> but it used to be that like at, at our games, like when we were when we were playing there, that like you know all the Milsim teams because your guys said your your side had multicam that they would all set up on your side. But at the Texas event, I had a lot of Milsim teams that just you know, did you take the multicam camel? Is that why? No, no, I didn't. No, no, I left that on the uh, the Empire side. Mm. So, are you taking the new camel like Cryptek and all that other cool stuff? Well, it's basically like green based stuff goes to the Empire and then tan based stuff. Uh, and civilian clothing, anything else that's like kind of in the middle goes to my side. So like black and gray will be on the rebels, mm -hmm. and then you know the was it um, what's the tan cryptic like Mandrake? I don't know. All right, well, I've just... always worn solid colors when I play airsoft. That's true. I, I didn't get my first set of multicam until very 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 late into my airsoft career. <laughs> yes, uh, same here. I only got my first set of multicam like shoot. The other day, three months ago, yeah, yeah, yeah not very, not very long ago. But even so. then, I mean, a lot of guys wore woodland, um, or you know, desert, desert digi around here was pretty popular in California. But pretty much the black wash uniform was green tops, tan bottoms. Worked out real well. That's all I did. Can we actually? Uh, there's a fun story from Tim vs. Bob, I believe, uh, four, where you were talking to the American Milson guys. I was talking with Bo, yes. the American Milson, and that was the first time I had met Bo. Same here. Yep. Yeah. And um, I forget exactly what was happening, but if you remember, you. the main stretch of road was like the main battleground because nobody really wanted to get into the swamps that right. were around to get wet. Um, and I had told this unit to go around into the swamps and get around you guys to flank. And Bo was amongst those guys, and he was kind of like looking back at me like, because he was wearing brand new Crypt Crypt Tech. And yeah, yeah, he that was Crypt Tech from head to toe. And he was like, oh, do I do I really have to go here? Well, I think um, he even says like I'm not doing it. Uh, I don't I don't recall exactly what happened, but I was basically because he had American Milson right on his plate carrier in front. I was like, "Come on, American Milson, what are you doing? Afraid of a little a little bit of water?" And I guess that was the comment where he was like, "All right, I got to do it now." He's called me out. Well, if I remember correctly, because I have a very vivid memory, of that is that you didn't say exactly. I mean, like, no, you weren't even there. Because you weren't you, even on my team. Because you told me the story five times afterward, and then Bo told it to me twice, mm -hmm. and basically said, "I'm not doing that." And he looked away, and you look back, and you're like, "Aren't you American Milsim? <laughs> like, aren't you, a, a, you know that?" And he's like, "God damn it!" And then like went in there. He and, did come up to me yeah. afterward and say that he had a good time. He's glad that he followed orders. And uh, I believe it was like, if you had said anything else, I wouldn't have done it. But, but you said that. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, both good peoples, too. And uh, I'm glad he had a good time in that game. Yeah, no, it was really fun to see him rocking and rolling out there. He's, he's really fun to play with. Um, hmm. But, yeah, is there any chance uh, we might see you at any BB Wars games? Sure. All right, good talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, You're telling me there's, there's a chance. chance. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, let's see if there are any questions that we can answer. I'm going to start with a shout-out to Evan Miller. Your shout-out is approved. Um, as well as Mr. Muncherman, it's good to see you again. And, of course, your shout-out is approved. Muncherman, is he a regular? Uh, I, You know, it's hard to remember a live show he hasn't been watching, actually, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, I'm confused. Does the Crytek M4 CRB have traits? Traits, yes. It has very good traits. It has uh, full metal traits. <laughs> oh, trades. That's pretty. Okay, that, that makes yeah. more sense. It does have trades. It has Crytek trades on it. Indeed. Well, doesn't and it also have Defiance trades on it? 
yeah, that's on the rail, and Defiance is our, our line of accessories. Um, but yeah, I mean, Crytek is a firearms brand, so you could say it has real steel trades on it. Very well played. Dysart Airsoft and AKM4 Airsofter, your shoutouts are approved. This dude, KC Airsofter, has, um, has been asking for a shoutout. What, what is that all about? That's secret society stuff, Bob. You wouldn't know anything about Airsoft that. Illuminati? No. Cool. Well, can, you just, can you just tell me? You're on the dang live show. If, if, you, if you have to ask, Bob. Oh. If you have to ask. You're oh, you're, you're an awful person. Okay, so what are you looking for right there? The uh, KC Airsoft dude is like, say hi to me. Hi, KC Airsoft dude. KC Ops Airsoft. Ah, well played, well played. Mm -hmm. All right. I believe he's also asking if uh, Crytek will ever make some entry-level guns. Maybe. All right. Well, fair play. Uh, can I have that uh, real quick? You may, Bob. All right. Well, are there any? Is there anything else you would like to tell us about any upcoming Crytek stuff or any news? There's a lot of stuff I would like to tell you, Bob. I just cannot do it yet. Okay. I had a meeting specifically about this topic. About okay, I'm going on the live show for GI. Uh, what? What can I say? And I was told what I could say, and I've said it. And uh, you'll just have to wait like everyone else. For Gosh, this. Dang it. <laughs> Gosh dang it. Um, I mean, you know a lot of exciting stuff anyway. I mean, the LMG enhanced. A lot of guys are waiting for that. The 22s later on this year. Mm -hmm. The AEG vector, which we talked about a little bit. I told you everything I could tell you about that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it takes it takes a long time and a lot of money to develop airsoft guns. And so Very true. things don't happen as quickly as, you know most people want them to happen but you know if it were easy everyone could do it yeah i mean there's a lot of things that people don't understand like you know it costs a lot to develop uh and at least get it out there and also you know a lot of a lot of manufacturers distributors do limited runs on guns they'll do a big run and then won't ever do another one so i mean case in point you've got the the limited edition lmg which mm -hmm. has a limited run right indeed yeah and those are all gone correct Yes, the limited ones are all gone, which is why the enhanced one is coming out. Yeah, which is kind of important. It is important. All right, Ben Rusnak, uh, your shout-out is approved. Ben Rusnak. I hope I said his name correctly. Please forgive me if I didn't. Blackbird Airsoft, your shout-out is approved. As well as the 12th Derp Man, your shout-out is approved. Milsim Shadow Airsoft wants to know what mods do you think I can do to my SPR? Mm. Well, you can do anything you want to that gun. Uh, it just depends on what you want to get out of it. You could do Bob's approach, which is mostly just externals. The internals are relatively easy to get to, and that's one of the that's one of the design features that we really tried to put into the guns, is make them really tech friendly. Mm -hmm. so, which is why the spring guide comes out, so you can release the pressure on the, on the gearbox when you're opening it up. Um, which is why we have the little wire guide around the bottom, and I know that I'm speaking French to you, Bob. No, 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 I, I'm listening. I'm trying to keep up with the comments, but I, I do remember uh, the wire guide is kind of key yeah. as far as that uh, the, the stock and the inner, inner... Jesus, what is all that going on? Anyway, sorry, continue, please. Well, I mean, I'm just saying the gun is pretty tech-friendly, and so if you have the wherewithal and you have the tools and the parts, have at it. Um, now, it's not that I wouldn't change uh, anything, on like upgrade anything on the inside. Like, I would probably just put, like, an... Uh, like, Maybe a Type Four inner barrel on there, but there's—I mean, my personal opinion, like, there's not much I need to change to make it a great gun on the field. It's great right out of the box. At least well, that's, that's the way it was designed. You yeah. Know? I mean, imagine if we gave you a gun that you needed to put together yourself. Like, who's going to buy that? Right? Well, I mean, there are like you know certain guns out there that you know it would behoove you to upgrade after the fact. Like a lot of sniper rifles come right out of the box shooting like 400, 410. But, but imagine if a sniper rifle didn't need any upgrading. It was just like boom. I'd be happy. Headshot. Well, here, uh, Good to go. There was one sniper rifle uh, that came out a long time ago that I was happy because it was similar to that. It was a Tanaka M700. It was a gas sniper rifle, mm -hmm. but right out of the box, it shot at 545, 550. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I put on was a tight bore barrel. And yeah, then there's I a lot more to a good sniper rifle than just the FPS, right? Hmm? There's a lot more to a good sniper rifle than just the FPS. Yeah, but I mean, with a sniper rifle, you do kind of want to get up to that limit so you can have that distinguishable range advantage exactly. against your opponent. So Exactly. Yeah. Well, actually, funny you mentioned that the Crytek Trident DMR was a, a model that we announced at Shot Show. It's it's even longer than the SPR, and it's made to be a designated marksman rifle. But uh, that's another gun that's coming out later on this year. And the key features behind that, I can't tell you now, but but I'll tell you the design ethos for that gun is to make it 
more than just a longer M4. Because I feel like a lot of DMR, SPR type guns out there, they're the same as your regular M4s, just with a longer barrel. Correct. But we're going to be adding a few things into that gun that you probably will not see in the other Trident series because it's made to help that gun perform at long range. Well, that's interesting. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, we'll just answer a few questions. Um, uh, before we go, uh, I lost the names here, but uh, some folks were asking consistently, uh, what do you have to do to get hired at one of our stores? You can send your resume to HR at Airsoft GI, or you can hit them up at jobs at Airsoft GI. Uh, someone asked uh, also what 40K armies I play. Imperial Guard, two Space Marine chapters, Ultramarines and the Diamond Sharks, which the second chapter is made up chapter. We've got Dark Eldar, Eldar, and Tau. Um, let's see, any other questions that we can get to before the end of the show? When's the end of the show? Uh, in about one minute. Milsim Shadow Airsoft, your shout-out is approved. Let's see. Any good questions for Tim from Crytac? Shout-out, 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 shout-out. Tim, do you run with a Crytac? Yes. Excellent work. Um, Cameron does Airsoft, your shout-out do you, is approved. Do, do you disapprove any shout-out? Um, no, not outwardly, but, you know, if I see... Uh, I've seen definitely seen a couple people who ask for a shout-out, and mm -hmm. then... You know, there's so, you can see there's so many comments going by that I can't get to them immediately. Mm -hmm. And, like, I remember one person the past couple weeks, they asked for a shout-out and didn't get immediately done. And they just started saying, like, all these, like, ri like ridiculously mean things. So at that point, is like, internally, I was like, okay, well, if they're going to be that rude, I'm not going to do it. So that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, this is a good question. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars? Thank you, gosh. But it felt like you guessed on that one, but... I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, it was a 50-50 shot. Uh, no, it's more like 70-30. Come on now. I don't know, man. Star Trek's pretty cool. Uh, <coughs> the most recent <coughs> ones have been really good. And isn't it funny that James Cameron is producing and directing both Star Wars and Star Trek? I thought it was J.J. Abrams. Oh, that guy, too. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> but seriously, though, how did one guy end up with both of those titles? Well, I mean, I think it's just like he has a track record of uh, making some pretty darn good movies. Except, I mean... The Star Trek, the first one that he made was pretty, yeah, a lot of a lot of lens and lens flares, yeah. But even he acknowledged that he's like, yeah, it was too. We got to tone it down a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm excited. I mean, the fact that Disney picked up Star Wars means a lot more stuff's going to get made. A lot of people were really worried about it, but the fact that more movies are coming out, more more stuff, Star Wars Battlefront, a lot of other things, it's really exciting. Really, really exciting indeed. Did you know that you can watch Star Wars in different like uh, sequences? Yeah, you and put then... in this DVD there. And then no, but there's like a there's like a different I don't know. I was reading something about how to watch it in different orders. There's different orders you can watch it in. You can watch it like the theatrical release, how it came out, like one through yeah, six. Four, five, six. Or you just yeah. the theatrical release would be four, five, six, one, two, three. Yeah, and then there's another, the other way around. But then people mix and match them sometimes. Why? I don't know. It has something to do with the story there. Like I said, I'm not a huge Star Wars guy. Or maybe I didn't say that, but I'm not a huge Star Wars You're guy. You're not really, no. No. Um but I heard that you can do that and it just it's better for the, the storytelling aspect of it. Interesting. I'm surprised you don't know this. Well, no, I mean, I, I know I know about the idea of watching them, like, in theatrical release of 4, 5, 6, then yeah. 1, 2, 3, or watching them chronologically of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Mm -hmm. um, but I've heard yeah. people doing, like, I don't know, 2 and 5 and 4 and what I don't know. For me, I have a tough time going 4, 5, 6, and then episode 1, 2, 3, because, like, 4, 5, 6 is like, yeah, awesome. And then I got to go to 1 and 2, and I'm like, I hate life right now. I think one of them is supposed to be you go 4, 5, 6, and then 2 and 3, and you just omit 1 completely. Uh, yeah, that's probably a really good decision. I mean, 2, there, there's at least some good Stormtrooper battles, and then 3, there's mm -hmm. a lot of battles, which makes it really palatable to me. So, Or maybe you start with 2, 3, 4, I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, i got to go read that article again. All right, really quick. Uh, last question of the day. Bob, and this is going to go to Tim as well, what is your favorite animal? Favorite animal? I don't know. Honey badger. You can't, Gene. Oh. Production assistant, you can't just help out like that. I don't know. You go first. I'm going to go with a dire wolf. What is that? That is. is that from Game of Thrones? Yes, it is from Game of Thrones. Is that a real wolf? Is no, it is really not. Animal? No, but I'm going to go with it. Well, I'm going to go with the dragon then. Dang it, that's a good choice. That's a really good choice. <laughs> All right, so Tim's favorite animal is dragon. Mine is dire wolf. Make, uh, make your judgments as you see fit. What if, what if you had to pick a real animal? What if you had to pick a real animal? Uh, if I had to pick a real animal, my goodness. Uh, if I had to pick a real animal, oh, that is a, a highly difficult thing. 
maybe a bald eagle. Yeah. I've always liked cheetahs. Cheetahs are cool. Yeah? They're fast. I actually saw, speaking of cheetahs. Or the great white shark. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. It's very scary. Um, Not if they don't have sharp teeth. You haven't seen those memes of sharks where people Photoshop human teeth onto them? Oh, no. <laughs> they look really friendly all fun. of a sudden. I've seen that photo of like where Drake's there and they Photoshop all the teeth out of him. Drake, like the rapper? Yeah. He's with no teeth? Yeah. Oh, I've never seen yeah, that. It just looks really funny and childish. <laughs> um, gosh. I had a really good... Uh, oh, you gotta go. You gotta go. All right. I'm well, going to, I'm going to the Clipper game tonight. Oh, Jesus. All right. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here for a live show. Sorry for the anticlimactic <laughs> ending. But uh, make sure to check out the Crytek SPR as well as their LMG Enhanced and their Trident SR, uh, Trident 47. I always get that confused, uh, which is going to be coming out very soon. And also, take advantage of the fact they're offering BBs now for Airsoft. Uh, and they're going to be pretty awesome to use in the very near future. Once again, Tim, thank you for being on the show. Perfunctory handshake for symmetry. Well played. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Once again, this is Tim from Chris, and I'm Bob the Axeman from Airsoft GI, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Samuel Campbell, I have an M235i and my M3. I need the mouse. I need the <laughs>